All right, let's get this going. Well, I've got the time and the mindset to knock it out. Let's see how this works. All right, let's establish some things. Today's podcast has no sarcasm. It has no jokes. Nothing in this is funny. Today's podcast, I'm not drunk. I am not suicidal. Okay, if next week you read that the podcaster known as the great one himself, the founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society, was found dead by suicide, no, I was not. Okay, not suicidal, not looking for money, not asking for help or sympathy, I'm not drunk, I'm not dying. Well, we're all dying. Okay, but none of, the, none of that is going on. I'm probably going to mention some names of some other people you know you've heard of. We're not judging people. We, the royal we. I'm not judging people. I'm not degrading people. I'm not character assassinating people. I'm using them as examples to illustrate my points. But there, there are no attacks being made on anyone in this podcast. This is an examination of something that I see happening to other people. I'm theorizing on why I think it's happening to them. I'm talking about how and why it's happening to me, okay? Depending on where you are in life, listening to today's podcast might make you consider killing yourself. So just be aware, we're, it's going to be a little dark. Everything I'm going to talk about here has emerged into my mind, and I've been formulating all of this about over the last 48 hours. And thus, there's still things I'm working out, looking at, wondering how they fit together. But this is going to be a brain dump to get this out. And I have some notes that I've been scribbling that I'm going to refer to a bit. So when you hear the long pauses, I'm either looking at my notes or thinking. And I'm not going soft or anything like that. Because going soft isn't going to do any good. None of that's going to solve the problem. Nothing, and here's the thing, there's no solution to the problem. We can jump straight to the end. It's Aaron Clary's had this question a number of times on Asshole Consulting. One time when I was guesting with him on Asshole Consulting when he was staying at my place. People write in, they're like, I have a really high IQ. And it's hard for me to make friends. I just I can't talk about sports ball. What do I do? And you know, Clary's answer is always the same thing. He's like, you buy a copy of The Curse of the High IQ. And then the one time he says, so great one, what's the solution to this guy's problem that he has this really high IQ and he can't talk about sports ball? And because I know the routine by now, I know where Clary's going, and Clary's right. I said, there is no solution. There is no fucking solution. If you have an IQ of 140 and you don't want to talk about sports ball, there's no fucking solution. And I can tell you right now, if you don't want to listen to the entire podcast and contemplate killing yourself, we can skip straight to the end. There is no solution. So 
So let me tell you about my dream. A little bit of it. The whole dream was really long and very bizarre. But here's the important part. Let's see, not last night, not the night before, so the night before that. I had this dream. And as part of the dream, I'm also still drinking coffee. It's it's almost 0900. My brain works best <clears throat> right about this time of the day, and that's why I wanted to sit down and knock out the podcast now while the juices are flowing. It's part of the dream. In the dream, I was working at some kind of animal research lab, which if you're new around here in the past, I worked at an animal research lab at Colorado State University for eight years, which is how I know so much about science and grants and all these other things. And anyway, different topic. In the dream, I and this girl I was working with, we had to open up a cardboard box because someone had put some honeybees and some honeycomb and some birds together in this cardboard box. And so this is this tiny cardboard box and we open up the box and these birds are like crammed in here with these honeybees and they're all alive. Remember, this is a dream so it doesn't really make sense. And we're remarking, you know, what kind of person, why would you put birds in with honeybees? And the box has no holes in it for air or light And in the dream, I'm just, I'm commenting on what a terrible thing this is to do to these animals. And a bunch of other stuff happened in the dream, too. And this is part of the reason why I don't work at a research lab anymore. Because I got laid off from that job, which was one of the best things to ever happen to me. Because it got me out of there and it got me unemployment. It gave me the cushion, yada, yada, yada. Okay, But I just didn't want to be there anymore because murdering and torturing small animals, it's, it's not good. It's not fun. And it's not science. Okay, once again, I'm going to do a lot of disclaimers in this podcast because there's going to be a lot of times I'm going to say something and then I need to explain to you what I'm not saying. Right? So I'm not saying you should be a fucking vegan. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat animals. Okay? There's a difference between killing the animal as swiftly as possible and painlessly after having allowed the animal to live a natural life or if it's raised like a cow raised on a farm, you know, allow the animal to live a good life. You know, so you see these videos of the pigs and the tiny stalls and all that other shit. I, no, I don't like that. I'm not going to stop eating pork. I'm not going to stop eating bacon. But that's not how another living animal should be treated. You let the pig run around outside doing what pigs do. And then you quickly kill it and you eat it. Because animals eat other fucking animals. Okay? That's reality. Right? So I'm not saying turn into a fucking vegan or an animal rights wacko. But you don't torture and murder small animals for your personal fucking amusement, which is what much of the research we did was. People were doing the research to get grants. They needed to get grants because they had to make money because they couldn't get real jobs. Easily 50% of the research I worked on was complete bullshit. So anyway, I wake up from the dream And the first thing that comes into my mind is 
There's no animals around me. Now, I grew up in small towns. At one point, we lived out in the country. We lived literally in the middle of a cow pasture. There's a barbed wire fence completely around our house and our yard with a cattle guard to get in and out. And it was in the middle of the cow pasture. You know, we had ducks and geese and guineas and chickens, cats, cows running around all over the place. There's a horse running around out there. You know, even when we lived in town, we had a dog, we had multiple cats. And I love animals, except for the small dogs that go yip, yip, yip all the time. And for, for whatever reason, after this dream, it really hit me that I've been living for a long time without any animals around me. And other living things are very important. Once again, Aaron Clary has told us multiple times, what is the most important thing in life. Say it with me, guys. Other people. I would include in the other people, you know, people or animals. We could say other animals. Once again, I'm not, this is not, you should go become a cat lady. This isn't, you know, seclude yourself away from humans and live with 40 dogs or anything like that. The thing is, as I've been thinking about this for the past two days, I don't know if Aaron understands just how fucking right he is. I mean, I think he's got it on the surface level, but I wonder, because I can't read his mind, I wonder if he's taken this as far as I'm about to take it. Okay, introductory story number two. I don't have the book. Lando Malari from Babylon 5. Yes, it's a fictitious character. We're talking about a television series. And I just started reading a three-volume book written about Lando Malari. I can't give you the whole overview of Babylon 5 because that would take months. Lando is this character who, at the beginning of the series, he is the ambassador from the Centauri Empire to Babylon 5. And he essentially has almost no power. He's regarded as a clown by his own people and many other people. No one takes him all that seriously. And he's, he has a great amount of freedom. And as the story arc progresses over five years, and then past that in this book that I'm reading, Londo rises to become the emperor of Centauri Prime, his planet. But his planet is also in a war, bombed extensively. And as the emperor, he is actually under the control of an alien species, which has a creature called a keeper, which has actually attached itself to Londo's body to keep an eye on what he does and make sure that he is the pawn of the shadows and the drock.
And thus Londo becomes the emperor of Centauri Prime. He's the most powerful person on the planet. And he has almost no freedom. Now, I'm not saying that power is bad. I'm not saying you shouldn't aspire to greatness. Just yesterday, over at Wayland yutani a delivery guy came in dropping off some stuff. And... He comes to the door, and he's, I don't know, maybe the six foot one, young, good looking, like physically fit, young black guy, giant smile on his face. I wrote it down somewhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do I have it? Probably not. No. Nope. Oh, I remember. Yes, there's a garbage truck outside. It's kind of interesting here at this new place. I don't know how there can be this many garbage trucks coming to dump the dumpsters. There's not this many dumpsters. This is the second garbage truck already this morning. There's seven days in the week. There's only four dumpsters. And yet there's multiple garbage trucks every day. I can't figure this out. Have you guys managed to get that empty yet? No, apparently we haven't. We gotta shake it some more. Are we done? Nope, we're not done. <sighs> so the guy comes walking into the office with the package. And I said, hey, how you doing, you know? And he says, I am destined for greatness. With this giant smile on his face, he's just radiating. Like, happiness and... Just, just, just power and control and seeking of his destiny, right? Not, oh, I'm okay. Uh, no, he's like, I am seeking greatness. I'm like, fuck. That's a hell of a way to be. Yeah, you know, he told me about his website. He's starting a clothing line. I'm like, you know, and, and we can pass all kinds of judgment. Oh, God, it's another guy. He started a website. He thinks he's going to sell clothes on the internet. Yeah, whatever. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Are you fucking seeking greatness in your life? Are you putting any fucking effort into anything? Well, he is. I mean, he might fail, but fuck you. Londo was seeking greatness. He was seeking greatness for his people. Centauri Republic at one time was a ginormous empire that had conquered other planets and then their power waned it shrunk Alondo wanted to restore the power of the power and the greatness of the Centauri Empire Next introductory story. I've told you this story a long time ago. This was many, many moons ago. Not the last time, but the previous time before that when I was back in Texas visiting my mother. At one point, 
my mother, I don't even remember how we got there. I just remember this part. My mother started crying and she said to me, the only thing I ever wanted was to have a family and be happy. And I had no response for that. I didn't say a word back because there's nothing I can say. I mean, I could say a lot of things. You know, she chose my father and that turned out to be a mistake because he divorced her, left her for another woman. She chose my stepfather, which was a mistake in a lot of ways. Yeah, and it's, it's not... I mean, no, she's not living in poverty under a bridge or something. But the point is she could have made better choices. She didn't. Why did she not make better choices? You know, we don't have time to get into that. I don't know. I wasn't there. We're not second guessing people. I'm pointing out one thing. At a point in her life, all she wanted was to have a family and to be happy. And for whatever reasons, many probably beyond her control, some of them in her control, it didn't pan out that way. And of course, you know, she wanted grandchildren, which I did not provide. I have some step-siblings from the second husband of hers that she married. That was a disaster. They're, well, one of them is dead. One of them is a basket case. The other one, I really don't know what's going on with him. And they actually did run around and be fruitful and multiply, but their children are, I don't know, scattered to the wind, whatever. They pay no attention to my mother, their stepmother. So all she wanted was a family and happiness. She didn't get that. I mean, yeah, she's got me. I don't count for much of a family. I'm hundreds of miles away. No wife, no children, so no grandchildren for her. And here's where we're going. Because I know you're waiting for something, as you should be. You're waiting for me to fucking deliver on all these promises. About how this podcast is going to make you want to kill yourself. My mother, Londo Malari, myself, many other people, we have lives that are sterile. Now, by sterile, I do not mean that lives are meaningless. I don't mean they're unhappy. I don't mean they serve no purpose. I don't mean they should be contemplating suicide. Here's what I mean. <clears throat> Their lives are sterile in the sense that there is not other life around them on a daily basis that is intricately integrated into their existence. So the examples I'm... The specifics of that are, we're talking about husbands, wives, children, grandchildren, pets, farm animals, other lives who are 
dependent upon them and that they are dependent upon and who will mourn their death. You know, when my mother dies, probably about the only person who's going to care is me. I mean, she has superficial friends. She has my uncle, who is her younger brother. We'll see which... My uncle's in fairly poor health. We'll see which of them dies first. You know, my, my uncle made bad decisions too, although he has two kids, an ex-wife who is insane... And again, we're, we're, I'm using, when I say insane, just, I don't have time to go into it. She has all sorts of cancer and she is insane. He has a daughter who is a serial slut who's, I don't know, on marriage number 12 or, all right, I'm exaggerating, on marriage number four, maybe? Has more kids than anyone can keep track of. How she can still have babies, I don't know. And my cousin, my uncle's son, he's the, he's the only one worth a shit. He's the police officer. I mean, when I die, nobody's going to give a shit. 50 years from now, I'd love to, or however far it is. I would love to live another 50 years. God, I'd love to see another 50 years of the decline. But 30 years, 40 years, whatever the hell it is, when I die, no one's going to give a shit. No one's even going to notice. That's the sterility. When I wake up in the morning... You know, there's nobody here that needs me, be it person or animal. Let's again, this doesn't mean when I say someone's life is sterile, this doesn't mean they don't have friends. Right? I have friends. I gotta do stuff now and then. Often enough. Went to the ballet last night with some friends of mine. When I say a person's life is sterile, it's, it's, I mean this in a way that's very narrow and does not exclude them from being happy and doesn't mean they're suicidal or any of this other horse shit. It just means that their life and their DNA and their existence, it has this finite end point. Right, if you have children and they have grandchildren, your your their DNA is going on. You are being carried on in them. But if you don't have children, you are sterile. Right, my DNA will die with me. When I'm gone, there will be nothing of me left. That's sterile. Would I like to have had or have, you know, a wife and children? Absolutely. Is this possible? No. Why is it not possible? Well, I've made mistakes in the past. Once again, we can sit here and play the blame game all day long. You know, do I blame my parents? Do I blame the schools? Do we blame society? It doesn't matter. Mistakes have been made. 
I didn't learn things I should have learned. I wasn't taught things I should have been taught. I didn't figure out things I shouldn't have figured out, should have figured out, right? Just all it, it doesn't matter. It's the past. We can't change it. Now, if you're listening to this and you're young, this, I'm doing this for you, for young people to listen and fucking digest this because here's another, we can jump again. Let's jump to the end real quick. Great one. What's the solution? There's no fucking solution. It's too late for me. It's too fucking late. There is no solution. This podcast is not for me. This podcast is for you. If you're sitting there going, oh, this is just an old guy. He's about to die. Because that's exactly what I've said in the past. This is an old guy. He's about to die. And now he's thinking, no, no, no. This is experience. This is looking back. This is thinking. Because it's not, this is an old person about to die who's found religion. I do believe those people exist. I think that's a separate thing. Okay, so once again, just hold on. Let me get through all of this. And we'll see if we can put it all together in a way that makes any kind of coherent sense. I don't guarantee I will, because like I said, this, this, this whole thing is 48 hours old. But it's not... I'm old and I'm going to die, so I'm going to discover religion because I have this hope that I'm going to live on. Okay, That is a phenomenon, but that's not what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not going to have a wife and children because women are unmarriable. The few quality women out there that I would be willing to have children with are, again, th this is not a judge. This is a fact. Okay, this is a fact. They are beyond my grasp. Okay, I don't have the money to raise children. I don't have the money to support a quality woman. If you're saying, well, a quality woman doesn't care about money. No, they do. Okay, if you're going to, if you're a woman and you want to have children and you are a quality woman, you want to be a mother to those children. To mother the children, you have to have money to fucking take care of them. Okay, and God help the next motherfucker that tells me money doesn't buy happiness. I am going to fucking kill you. Money fucking buys happiness. Money solves a hell of a lot of problems. Okay? Money doesn't... Now, okay, let's talk about this for a second because this is integral in this. Because this goes back to why when I say that being sterile, having a sterile life, it's this narrow corridor. It doesn't mean you can't be happy. It doesn't mean you're suicidal. It doesn't mean you don't have a purpose. All this other horse shit, okay? If you've been around here a while, you know that I fucking hate this thing where people think that one thing causes one thing and there's one cause for one effect and one effect has one cause and all this other stuff. Money fucking buys happiness. Okay, Money by itself with nothing else can't buy you complete overall happiness. And some people also say, great one, the purpose in life isn't to be happy. You're not wrong. Okay, I'm not saying the fucking reason you exist is to be happy either. Just, once again, don't take things I say and fucking try to stretch them beyond where I'm going with them, all right? Once again, I'm being very specific in today's podcast. I'm using words as deliberately as possible. To have happiness, to have a good life, to have a meaningful life, to achieve things, to implement your will to power, to manipulate and change the world around you, okay, it requires a number of things. None of those things by themselves provide the full answer. But when you put them together in the correct doses, in the correct amounts, in the correct ways, they move you more towards, closer towards a more perfect life. What is a perfect life? I don't know that I have an exact definition, but a perfect life is you manifesting you know, the best of yourself in the world around you 
creating, doing, thinking, exploring, expanding. I would include in that having children and having a family and caring for other life forms and having other life forms care for you. Okay, so money factors into that. Money alone won't get you to that perfect life point. But it's goddamn going to be really useful getting you there. Other people alone will not get you to the perfect life point. But it'll damn sure help you. So there's a whole lot of things that will help you get there. And your accessibility to those things is going to influence your perfect life point attainment. Okay, so to bring this back, you know, great one. You could get married and have children. Well, I could. But first of all, I need an availability of women to do this with. Okay, the availability of said women is low. Number two, I need to be a man worthy of this. And, you know, we can have lots of philosophical debates here about whatever. You know, am I worthy? Am I not worthy? Why? It, again, it's we don't, we don't have time for that right now. Need to have the money to raise children and support a wife. Because if I were going to get married, my wife's not going to work. She's going to stay home. She's going to fucking raise the kids. That's not viable financially for me to do. Again, this is not good. This is not bad. We are not making... We are making statements in today's podcast of what is. What is objectively, subject, not subjectively, objectively, empirically verifiable. We are not determining or declaring any of these objective, verifiable, empirical facts to be good or bad. That's not happening today. If you're looking for moral judgments, you have come to the wrong fucking place today. We are making statements of fact all day long. Sterile life is a life that is empty of intricately bound connections, tightly bound connections with other living creatures and a future for your DNA. A future for your family, a future for your memory, a path that who you are will continue into the world. And upon realizing that my life in this definition is sterile. I started thinking about what do you do about this? You know, what what do I personally do about this? Let's jump to the end of the podcast. There's no solution, okay? There is no solution. And again, I want to emphasize, because it's on my notes here, when I say that life is sterile, this doesn't mean you're not happy. This doesn't mean you're not having purpose. This doesn't mean you don't enjoy yourself. And it doesn't mean I'm going soft. This goes, I'm not going to, I'm not going soft. You know, next time you turn into the podcast, I'm going to be screaming bad words and calling women bents and talking about how they shouldn't be allowed to vote. And it's all, I'm not making any of that stuff up. That's not me play acting for attention. You 
don't, don't listen to this. Email. Oh my God, the great one. He, he's, he's discovered he doesn't have a wife and, and now he's, he's going to go soft and beta or something. No. But we're acknowledging reality. So I started thinking about this and thinking, okay, what practically can be done about it? What have other people in this situation done? Blah, blah, blah. And as I do, I start looking at other people within the sphere and thinking about it. Okay, so let's talk about where I think I see this happening in other people's lives. So again, for the cheap seats, we are not, well, we, I keep fucking saying we, like a fucking retard. I am passing judgments upon nobody, okay? I don't need to hear anything about the great one said this about so and so. No, 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 just calm the fuck down. When you have a life that is sterile, there is this hole, right? There is this place in your daily existence where something is missing. As human beings, what do we do? When we got something in our life that's missing, we try to fill it. It's perfectly natural. It's what we do. And the more I thought about it, the more I think there's this, there's this rash right now, right? There's this outbreak of people in the red pillosphere taking the God pill. And I'm looking at them and I'm going, hey, Roosh has taken the God pill. Okay, so first of all, let's take Roosh and uh, Nick Krauser. Both of these guys, pickup artists, ran around, banged all kinds of women, and now both of them are running around saying, you know, banging all these women didn't fulfill me. I would like to have a wife and children. And I'm looking at that, and here's my interpretation. Roosh and Krauser just discovered that their lives are sterile. Yeah, this this is not a bad thing. Okay, this is called self-awareness. This is a good thing. They've realized what I'm talking about right now. They've realized their lives are sterile. And they want these other people in their lives. Are they facing the same hurdles? Yes, they got to pick from a fucking shitty batch of women. And they got to be able to financially support them. I don't know how much money these guys have. You know, they, if they want kids. they so So they have all these same hurdles too. They have a lot of advantages, right? They know a lot about people. They do have money. They have life experience. You know, they're very savvy, intelligent humans who understand human psychology. They have lots of friends and contacts, right? They, they have a lot of advantages. But I think both of them have seen that their lives are sterile, and now they're taking action to fix that. But an aspect of this that we're seeing emerging in the red pill sphere, and Roosh is doing this also, is the embracing of the God pill. Here's my thesis. Many people in the red pill sphere are embracing the God pill, as they call it, as we, I said we again. Well, all right, in this case, we, as a community, we do call it that. In an attempt to compensate for the sterility. And here's the thing, the God pill isn't going to fix this. A 
Well, let's pretend for a moment that God does exist, that there is actually this invisible man up in the sky, and when you die, you're going to go hang out with him, and he cares about you, and he loves you. Even though the Old Testament God slaughtered countless people, he loved them all as he was murdering them. But let's say God is a real thing. God isn't going to be there with you physically when you wake up in the morning, right? God is not going to make love to you. God is not going to cuddle with you. God is not going to hold your hand when you're afraid, right? God is not going to bring you chicken noodle soup when you're sick. When you're sitting by your fireplace and you're reading a book, God isn't going to jump up on your lap and curl up. This sterileness cannot be filled by God. Or religion or faith. Now, there are other aspects of life, sure, that you can put God in there and God can help you deal with that. Religion can help you deal with that. But God can't fix the sterility. Only other living organisms can fix the sterility. Thus, again, bringing us to what is, because this this is a big fucking hole. And when you're young, you probably don't notice it. I've never noticed it that much before. I think like many things, you need life experience to identify I don't want to say problems. There are things that happen in life. There are aspects of being alive. There are aspects of human psychology and existence and your own existence that you just need to spend time on the planet Earth and you have to have experience in order to figure these things out. Once again, I've said it so many times before. I have this thesis that human beings, we just can't learn the fucking easy way. right? If we could learn the easy way, someone would just tell you, you know, don't touch the hot burner. Okay, I won't touch the hot burner. But no, we have to fucking, you know, to tell you, don't date crazy girls. You've just got to date crazy girls, don't you? You just can't listen. You know, whatever it is. We have to be alive long enough to figure things out. And the notion that there is... I'm, I'm putting forth this. I'm putting forth this thesis. Then a healthy human being, mentally, physically healthy human, there is the biological drive and desire to reproduce and to be surrounded by other creatures. I've said it over and over again. Humans are social animals, right? That's why in Ancapa Dice, everybody's not going to run down the street raping and killing each other. It's not going to happen. If humans' natural inclination was to run around and kill each other, we'd all be dead a long time ago before. I know this is going to be a shock for some of you. See, there was a time when there actually was no government. When Homo sapiens sapiens just wandered around and did shit. I know, I know many of you think the government came first and the human species came later. But there one time actually was no government to make it against the law for people to kill each other. And yet somehow, somehow, our ancestors managed to not run down the roads and murder each other. I mean, I know animals do this. I, I, when we lived in the middle of the cow pasture, cows were running around killing each other all the time. They just couldn't control themselves because they had no government to tell them it was wrong. And all the cows in the cow pasture, they were ruled by this warlord cow. God, if I, you know, see, and this is the thing. It's like I'm sitting here talking about how you need people in your life. And at the same time, I really want to fucking slit the throats of 95% of the population of the planet Earth because you're so fucking dumb. Because you actually can't figure out how to not kill other people without a government to tell you it's wrong. Fucking Christ. 
See, once again, this is the odds I'm up against to, to interact with other people, just interacting with other humans. Okay, so we crave this. As humans, we want to interact with other people because we are social animals. But my God, if you're not a fucking sheep, if you're not stupid, finding people that you can stomach enough to interact with is difficult. That's why there's no solution. Mm. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm about to tie stars. I'm almost going to talk, and I just, I thought, wait, wait, is that the right word? Let's, once again, we're being very precise today. We're doing philosophy. This is called thinking. I think Roosh has discovered that his life is sterile. So then Roosh says, what am I going to do about this? I think part of his solution is the God pill. The God pill will not solve it. Because the God pill does not give you physical, emotional, and intellectual contact with another living organism. Hang on, I need to write that down. That's, that's very important. Physical emotional, intellectual contact with other living organisms. Okay, that is very important to what I'm talking about. That might even be a better way of describing sterility in the sense that I'm using it, in living a sterile life. A serial life is one in which you do not have physical, emotional, intellectual. Is, is that just, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I mean, I have all of those things, but they're on a superficial level. Okay, so what's what's the opposite of superficial? See, we have a this, I actually have a fucking thesaurus. I have these things called books. I know some of you think that they're outdated. And that's why I can't fucking spend time with other people. Hang on, I'm still here. Just everybody relax. Go, uh, look, you need to gun. God, if you need to go get another drink, this is a great time to go get yourself another fucking drink. If this hat has made you start drinking, well, don't, it's going to get worse before it gets better, guys. I'm just letting you know. We, we haven't got to the bad. We haven't got to the really depressing parts yet. Superficial. Antonym. See, depth, gravity. Depth, deep. Intertwined. Okay. Brain's working. Go away, Thesaurus. Thank you for your help. Intricately. Deeply intertwined. 
deeply, we're going to go with that for now, intertwined. Now again, once again, a little great one. If you deeply intertwine your life with a woman, she might divorce rape you. Yes, I, I'm not, this, none of this is negating that you can get divorce raped, guys. Again, that's the, tr that's the hurdle. That's the challenge. That's why I'm telling you there's no fucking solution. Not in today's society where, once again, Men and women have been turned against each other. Women have been weaponized against men. Is it their fault entirely? Is it, no, are we blaming? No, we're, I'm stating a fucking fact, okay? Women have been weaponized against men. Who's done it and why they've done it? We could spend fucking months just making a list of who has weaponized women and why they've weaponized them, okay? That's not what we're fucking here for. My point is there are a lot of men who have sterile lives and there is no solution because most women are our enemies. It's not a good thing. It's not a natural thing. It's not how the human species became the most powerful animal on the planet Earth. But apparently there's a whole lot of people whose only reason for existing is to destroy the human species and the happiness of the human species and the future of the human species. And they're fucking doing it. Thank you, cucks. Because once again, if if we could just kill these people, but oh God, we can't do that because we're going to make it illegal to kill other people. Even though these people are busy exterminating us, can't fucking kill them. All right. We've refined our definition a little bit. Roosh has looked at his life. And once again, it, you know, Roosh has his family. He's talked about his mother. He's talked about how leftists have threatened his mother's life and all this other horseshit. He has people all around him. But I think what Roosh has realized he is missing is deeply intertwined physical, emotional, and intellectual contact. And he is seeking to deal with that, to compensate for that, to fix that, to repair that through, among other things, the God Pill. I don't think the God Pill is going to work. Now let's take Turd Flinging Monkey, because I talked about this a while back. I told you guys I listened to a podcast where Turd Flinging Monkey was on, I think it was the Red Man Group, and it was like two hours long, and a big fan of TFM, I just got his new book, his, I don't know if it's a new book, it's new to me, TF Monkey, 13 Rules to Not Be a Fucking Cuck, it's actually a pamphlet, which again is, is fine, you don't need to use more words than you need to use, not everybody, you know, this entire podcast, when it's all said and done, if I've worked all of this out, but we're working this out now. Right, but if I sat down and worked all this out, this is probably a 20-minute podcast. But we're doing the process right now. And it is we. I'm talking, you're listening, you're critiquing, you're going to send me feedback on things you think where I'm wrong or things where you think I'm right. And you're going to give me some evidence and some intelligent fucking conversation. And I'm going to adjust because this is all spitballing. This is just like when I did the illusion of infinity. We're, we're spitballing here. <laughs> Which, shockingly enough, as I the illusion of infinity podcast, I think I called every, every bit of that right fucking dead down the center. Turd flinging monkey. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Man, I'd love to meet him. I haven't listened to that much of his stuff. He's another of these guys. He just fucking podcasts for two, three, four fucking hours. It's like, oh man, I don't know if I can listen to that much. But pretty much everything I've listened to him, listened to of his, he's dead on the money. I agree with him on pretty much everything, except for the sex doll thing. Now, in this interview, they're asking him about the sex doll thing, right? And TFM put forth the following argument. He said, look, Everything you can get from women, you can get from places other than women, right? You want, 
he's I get my intellectual stimulation from my friends and the things I blah 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 and he says but I have the sex doll because as humans we need physical intimacy and we need trying to I'm trying this has been you know months since I listened to this and I'm trying to best I can remember the way he put it because again not trying to put words in TFM's mouth or misrepresent his views but this has stuck with me because the way he presented it, it's like damn that's really hard to argue with he's so he says that as a man, he wants another person, a woman, you know, a wife, whatever, to look after and to care for. I'm like, yeah, I agree. Let's see, I agree with that. As humans, we want to care for other people, right? Again, this is why women go into things like social, one of the reasons, one of the reasons they go into things like social work and teaching and all this other stuff. Women have this drive, the medical field, right? Women have this drive. I think it's stronger in women in, than it is in men, but men have it as well. We all have this drive to care for other people. Why? Because humans are social animals. Once again, this we before there was a government, as hard as this is for you fucktards to believe, humans didn't run around just murdering each other. I, I cannot emphasize how much this does truly frustrate me. The people who sit there and say, well, if murder wasn't illegal, people would just kill each... God, you're fucking... St- you're projecting yourself, okay? That's you projecting yourself upon the world, you fucking dimwit. Not everybody is a fucking intellectual, fucking emotional retard like you are. We have a lot of those now only because the government breeds retarded people. And I don't mean retarded people like the ones going to Texas A&M fucking Aggie Achieve program for $10,000 a year. I'm talking about retarded people like the fucking bitch Dr. Carly who fucking created that program because she can't get a real fucking job. Okay, I'm talking about retarded people like politicians. I'm talking about retarded people like lawyers. Anyway, I'm digressing. And TFM says, look, I have my sex doll. I care for the sex doll. And that's how I channel that aspect of my human nature. And I'm listening to his... And again, there, he gave, he put a lot more depth into it than this, okay? But I'm listening to him. I'm like, fuck. You know, it's hard to argue with that. It's very hard for me to come up with a coherent argument with that. And it's taken until now for me to come up with a coherent counter to TFM's thesis that the sex doll is enough, okay? Here's why the sex doll is not. So TFM has recognized that his life is sterile. He's using the sex doll once again, guys, we're not judging. We're not saying TFM is a bad person. All right? Everybody calm the fuck down. He's using the sex doll to compensate and to fix and to fill that sterility, which does not make him a bad person. It makes him normal, okay? He sees the problem. He's attempting, he's attempting to fix the problem. That's called normal. Abnormal is when you have a problem, you ignore the problem, and you sit around waiting for the government to fix your fucking problem for you. Okay, that's abnormal. That's broken. The sex doll cannot fix the sterility because the sex doll cannot offer deeply intertwined physical, maybe, but not emotional and intellectual connections. The sex doll also will not perpetuate your DNA. When TFM dies, Celestina isn't going to give a shit. Our good friend Adam Piggott, now he has said on podcasts and also in his writing, he's mentioned that one of the mistakes in his marriage 
was that they didn't have children. He, he sees that now, and I don't remember his exact reasonings if he's given them. And I'm not going to go into how Adam Piggott is... But, okay, here we go. Once again, we're, we're not calling Adam Piggott names, guys. You guys know I, I love and admire Adam Piggott. I think he is... He, he is... How do I put this without like sounding gay or stupid? I mean, he's a very smart man. I admire him greatly. When I say that Adam's website is the one website that I check and read daily, that's not a fucking exaggeration. Before I started this podcast, you know what I did on the computer? I read what Adam Piggott posted today, okay? But Adam is doing the God pill thing. And he's made fun of me for making fun of people who are God pilled, right? But and, I, and Adam, Adam has said, one of the mistakes in my marriage is we didn't have children, right? I think Adam has identified the sterility in his life. Again, this is not a fucking insult. Adam's identified this, and he's, he's examining it. And he's looking at it, and he's thinking about it. And he's doing things about it. And and he's may, you know, and maybe he'll come to the same conclusions I am, or, or maybe he'll come to some different conclusions, and what and maybe he'll be more right, maybe more wrong, whatever. But th- again, he has the self-awareness. Okay? And what's he doing about it? If that, he doesn't have a sex doll. Because I do think Adam understands, whether he knows it or not, I think Adam understands the importance of physical, emotional, and intellectual connection with other people on a deep level. I think Adam gets that. And this brings us back to Aaron Cleary when Aaron says the most important thing in life is other people. I wonder if he understands. I I think that is a greater truth than Aaron understands it to be. Because as I look at these people who, by my observation, have this sterility in their life and have identified the sterility, right? Roosh, Krauser, TFM, Adam, myself. Having this sterility in your life, again, this doesn't mean these people are unhappy or they have no purpose or whatever. All of these are great people. You know, of those five people, I am certainly the lesser. But this is an important aspect of life. It's something that humans need to truly fulfill their potential. And when you don't have that, you're going to put something there, consciously or subconsciously. And the thing that should be there, the thing that should fill that sterility, is other people. Which is what Aaron Clary has been preaching to us for how many fucking years? a great one what are you filling it with because you're thinking if you're smart you're thinking that i'm thinking that Uh, you know and i can make semi funny comments here and everything but again this i told you this there's no jokes in this podcast this is not we're not fucking funny this is not funny none of this is funny guys this is not cute this is not funny To a, to a small extent, it's like the little Supergirl statues. I mean, those are a coping mechanism. I mean, they're funny, and I do it lightheartedly. That's why I do. That's my fundraiser. Because I'm not going to fucking cyber beg to pay my rent. 
Okay, let's talk about this for a second because it's a little bit related. The cyber begging thing. You know, when you when you get on the internet and you're cyber begging for people to help you pay your bills. My favorite is, well, give us money to help pay the server cost for my website and shit. Guys, look, if you can't provide the basic things in your life like your rent, and if you want to have a website but you can't afford a server, then I just I can't get look, you don't have to be rich for your opinion to be valuable, but you not gotta not be a parasite. You gotta be able to pay your way through life. You got to be able to pay your fucking basic survival. Pay for your basic survival. Man, if you can't do that, even the argument of, well, I've made all these mistakes, so you should listen to me because I'm telling you what not to do. No, no, no. If you haven't corrected your own mistakes to the point that you can pay your own fucking bills, you don't need to be giving advice. Nobody should be listening to your fucking opinions. If you need, and once again, I, I pay for a fucking server. The server for the Cynical Libertarian Society, they actually, the bill just came in. It's like, uh, I should know, remember, I should know exactly because I just looked at the fucking bill about two hours ago. It's right around $230 a year. $230 a year. Guys, if you can't afford $230 a year for your website, get the fuck off the internet because you have nothing of value to say. If you can't create $230 worth of value for other people in the real world in 12 fucking months, shut up. Shut the fuck up. So to me, you know, the cyber begging, I do it very frivolous, frivolously. I don't take it seriously. And when I do the cyber begging, I am never going to... All right, never say never. Okay, here's the other thing. Cyber begging for something like, oh, I found out I have cancer or, or my kid has cancer or, so, or we were in a car wreck. I mean, that's what insurance is for. But okay, something like that, I, I can be a little more allowing for given the cir given circumstances and specifics okay cyber begging once again for your food and your rent and your fucking server cost no but cyber begging for something kind of stupid and frivolous like hey i'm gonna buy a remote control boat you guys want to you know i mean that because everyone knows it's not a serious thing that's why I cyber beg for the Supergirl statues. I can live without the fucking Supergirl statues. It's me poking fun at the process. It's me to extend poking fun at myself. Poking fun at myself. But the Supergirl statues are, are a small part of my coping mechanism. Probably the hitting on 19-year-old college girls. That's probably part of my coping mechanism also. And no, I'm not going to stop hitting on 19-year-old college girls, just so you know. Once again, I'm not going soft. I'm recognizing things for what they are, right? If I had a wife whom we truly loved each other and we had a great marriage and three children, I would probably not be hitting on 19-year-old college girls. I'm going to go out on a limb there. I could be wrong, but... Odds are I wouldn't be doing that, okay? So hitting on 19-year-old college girls is obviously a fucking coping mechanism for this because we have self-awareness here because we're not women. Maybe this podcast, I mean this podcast in particular, this might be part of the coping mechanism. I think it is. I think it's clearing the thoughts and the ideas from a tiny little brain and getting them out there and articulating them and throwing them into the world. So having this life of sterility, which we are now defining as a sterile life is a life that is, and I'm going to keep defining things because it's important. Once again, we're doing philosophy. We're not arguing by definition, which I want to punch people who do that. That's right up there with, which came, because this came up, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Oh, God, will you fucking low IQ fuckwits, please just get away from me. A 
A sterile life is a life which is devoid of deeply intertwined physical, emotional, and intellectual contact with other people and animals. I, mean, I will say and animals. I do. I really think that being around animals is an important part of the human psyche. Because again, we didn't evolve in a vacuum. We evolved with other animals around us living out in the wild. You know, you go outside into nature, into the woods or something, you know, the animals interact with each other. Some of them interact with each other by eating other ones, right? But all the animals, they're, they're not in vacuums separated from each other. They all live in the environment together and interact. So having that interaction with not just other people, but with animals... I think is required for a 100% healthy psyche. And it's again, not saying that if you don't have the, if your life is sterile, as I'm defining it, that you're insane or you're not psychologically, but it's, it's a component and it's an important component. And if you don't have it, <clears throat> you've got to make up for it in other ways. All right. And then the other aspect of a sterile life is of course, your DNA not having a future. Now, another aspect of a sterile life is the impact it has I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this as the leaf blower blows outside God I hate leaf blowers speaking of low IQ people you know here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins we had to make smoking illegal on all city property which includes outside city parks like you can be out in the middle of nowhere can't smoke a cigarette anywhere on city property because secondhand smoke is dangerous. But we take leaf blowers and we blow all these leaves and you kick all the little particles of leaves and the particles of dog shit and the particles of animal shit and all the dust and all the pollen and you blow all this up in the air so people can inhale it. That's perfectly okay. But secondhand tobacco smoke, oh, that's bad. Okay, so speaking of low IQ people who should be exterminated... Because God knows they're not fulfilling anybody's fucking physical, emotional, and intellectual needs. Another aspect of having a sterile life that specifically ties into the part where your DNA has no future. Okay, children. All right, let me, let me just jump to, I, I'm not really sure how to phrase this, so let me get to the end game of this. Can you imagine what it would be like to have as your father Aaron Clary, Adam Piggott, T.J. Martinell, Turd Flinging Monkey, Roosh. I mean, can you imagine for one minute growing up receiving guidance and wisdom from those men? Oh, fuck. Whew. And so when these men, and once again, this is, oh my God, it's a great one trying to, to, to shame them into making babies. No, no, God damn it, please, no. Okay. I'm just stating, again, I'm stating a fucking fact. This is an empirical, verifiable, objective fact. 
those five men would do a hell of a job raising children into productive, healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally adults who would go forth into the world and do great things. And the fact that they do not have and may never have, or they might in the future, we don't know. But the fact that they are not doing this, that they are not creating and raising those children with good quality women to mother them, it's detrimental to them. You know, in a small way, once again, I'm not saying these guys are emotionally crippled and they can't function because they don't have children. But it is, in a small way at least, it detrimental to them. And it's detrimental to society as a whole. Because once again, without digressing too far, who's doing the breeding and the reproducing in our society? It's the fucking retards. It's the fucking average IQ sheep on welfare who just spit out baby after baby and send them into fucking public school system and then send them to college to get a worthless degree and then they go work as baristas. You know, none of those men would send their fucking daughter off to major in sociology. Living, having a life that is sterile, in the sense that I've defined it here, long-windedly, but defined it, is not only detrimental to the person living that life, but it's detrimental to the nation which they are a part of. And I mean nation not as nation-state, the way I mean nation as in a collection, a group of people with a common heritage and common culture. You know, my mother, she, she has a sterile life. She compensates by adopting every old and crippled animal she can find. So she has animals. She's got, she's got that part. Her DNA went on as far as me, but it's going to stop there. But, you know, that's her compensation is adopting all these old crippled animals and trying to make friends with everybody on the planet and constantly getting fucked over. My, my mother, my mother is friends. My, it did, I, and again, this is, I think this is why my mother continues to be friends with people who just shit all over her. I, I would just, I would have nothing to do with these people. And I think it's because she recognizes she's got her life is she's got this hole in her life we could say she's lonely whatever the fuck it is I don't know exactly the right word for it but she puts up with shit that no sane human being should put up with and in the end of that becomes detrimental I mean t turd flinging monkey he's got his sex doll is he happy? Probably. Is he having a good life yet? Is he? Ha but I do think that it is a small amount detrimental to him that he isn't able to spend his life with a real human woman who will give him that physical, emotional, and intellectual contact that he needs. Does that mean he's a bad person? No. Does that mean he's... He's, he's unhappy. No. Does that mean he can't live a great life and do great things? No. I'm just saying, and, and again, again, you know, I understand the pool of women is really small. So we're all doing the best we can with what we've got, right? We have to work within the constraints of what we have. And this brings us back to there is no fucking solution. You can't just say, well, turd flinging monkey, you know, having a sex doll is stupid, man, because the sex doll can't give you emotional and intellectual contact that you need to be completely fulfilled. So you need to go out and find yourself a girlfriend. Oh, well, I'm just going to go on down to the girlfriend store, you know, and just pick one up. 
Okay, it doesn't fucking work. If it worked like that, there'd be no market for sex dolls or Supergirl statues. You know, or any of the other things, or the God pill, or anything else that people use to compensate. Okay, you can't just go down to the fucking girlfriend store. You know, the husband store, that's a fantasy that women have. Because once again, I, I know some of you don't want to hear this. Women don't have self-awareness. When's the last time a woman ever said, how long have I been fucking talking to you? An hour and 25 minutes. When's the last time you heard a fucking female spend an hour and a 25 minutes of her fucking life contemplating her existence and and the uh, and, and holes in her existence and and what might she might be compensating for when have you ever heard this happen you know women talk about nail polish and no i'm not ma- we're not making jokes here this isn't funny so no, TFM, I, I, again, I think the sex doll thing, this is why I think it's wrong because he doesn't get this. But it's not like he can go down to the girlfriend store and just pick one up. We're doing the best we can in the society we live in with the tools we've got and the people we're surrounded by. Right, It's a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's fucking true. You cannot fly like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. Aaron Cleary wrote a fucking book about it. It's called The Curse of the High IQ. There's nothing we can do, guy. There's nothing we can do. If you're young, you're listening to this, you've got years and years ahead of you, you're 20 years old, give it away. Okay, there's you, you can start, you can think about this, recognize this is going to happen to you, recognize this is a thing, start working on it now. You can't go down to the girlfriend store, but you can start screening women. Am I saying that everybody should get married and make kids? No, but I am saying, and then see, here's the other thing too. Once again, we got to drag the state into it. Legal marriage. So I'm sitting here saying that is. I am saying, I am saying that ideally, okay, first let's start with ideally, idealistically. Idealistically, men, that's you, that's me, right? Aaron, Adam, TJ, Roosh, TFM. Men should have children with a woman and form a nuclear family, idealistically. Okay. Once again, we have to work with reality. The reality of our situation is that the institution of marriage can destroy your life when combined with a woman who has been weaponized and most women have been weaponized. Am I saying idealistically that all of those men and me, that we should all have children with a woman and have family? Yes, 100%. I am idealistically saying that TFM, Aaron Cleary, Adam Pickett, TJ Martinell, Roosh V., Myself, we should all have children and a wife, idealistically. And that that would bring us a greater, greater than where we are now. Once again, right? I'm not saying any of these, we're we're all committing suicide or or anything. Okay, but that would bring all, all of us, because it is human nature, a greater level of Happiness, mental health, physical health, satisfaction. It would give us another purpose to live, right? Men need reasons to live. For many men, the reason, right? Once again, other people have said this before me. Men 
in the past have gone to work and worked shitty jobs in order to provide for their families. Why? Because providing for the family is that fucking important to them. It gives you that. Now, realistically, within our social, political, economic climate, should all of those men I just named run down to the girlfriend store and pick one up and marry that broad and spit out some babies? Fuck no. If you are young and you recognize that this, this being defined as having the sterility in your life, as I've defined it, is a problem in the sense that it will keep you from being the best you can be, you can start, take action, start taking actions now to perhaps solve it. Right? You can look for a woman who fulfills your requirements. You're going to be looking a long time. We know that. And you can move forward through your life with the awareness that this is a thing. And for you, maybe there is a solution, a real solution, not, not a you know, substitute God pill or sex doll or you know, Supergirl statue solution, but an actual real solution that you will have the power to implement because you're aware this problem is coming at you with enough notice. All right, let me look over my notes and see if I've forgotten anything that I think is important. You know, let me jump back to the God pill for a quick hot moment here. Because I said that God isn't going to solve your problems. But now there is one aspect of the God pill that I acknowledge is helpful is that if your God pill involves you becoming part of a church community, okay, that gives you interaction with other people who hopefully share your, ho hoping is not a process. Okay, so we've, we've got a lot of cuck churches. Let me back up. A lot of churches are cucked. So if you screen your church correctly, and if you can find a church that is still in alignment with who you are and where you are and your morals, and your religious beliefs, yada, 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 okay? So the God pill, the God pill can be part of the solution in the sense that if the God pill helps you to narrow down and focus your beliefs and what you stand for and what you stand against, okay? And you, and you focus in on that, and you really get a good understanding of that, and then you, loc you locate a church that has very similar, if not exactly the same, uh, you know, again, where do you find that? But very, very similar focus. Then that church, in theory, gives you access to a community of people who have a very similar belief system and focus that matches with yours. And within that group of people, you may be able to find the physical, emotional, and intellectual contact to the depth you need to fill the sterility in your life, which may up and to include, you know, getting married, which again, government institutions, so many fucking problems there. That the guy, you know, that your a marriage is a contract between a man, a woman, and the government and a bunch of lawyers. But once again, we gotta work with what we got because we're not gonna get rid of the legal institution of marriage because then who would build the fucking roads because you fucking retards just can't conceive of any aspect of your life that the government doesn't have control over. You know, and then you wonder why, you're, why our society is so fucked up. Okay, but the God pill, through the refining of who you are, through locating a church community, through being a part of that community, that aspect of it could lead to 
the filling of the sterility in your life. But God himself can't do it. All right, I think I think that's it. I think I've brain dumped as best I can on this for now. I'm sure I'll be thinking about it some more. This this is something else. Along with the illusion of infinity, God, I really. And we're going. I'm going to the busy season at work. God damn it! I really want to write this stuff down. And make it coherent and presentable, and more fleshed out in written form. But then again, if wishes were fishes, right? If we could just run down to the girlfriend store. <laughs> they don't exist. All right. Yes, if, if this made you want to kill yourself, don't. Where there's life, there's hope. Lando Malari, in the book I'm reading right now, after the Keeper, which is the parasitical organism that attaches itself to him to control his behavior, you know, he contemplated, I should just kill myself. And he's like, well, but fuck. He says, as long he didn't say fuck. Then he says, well, as long as I'm still alive, you know, I still have a chance. I still have the opportunity to beat this. And I was listening to the Dick, listening to the Dick show, getting caught up on that. And we did another episode where another person in the Dick show audience fucking killed himself. It was the second one. Second suicide. You know, and I'm right there with Dick. Dick, the, the the first time Dick went off on this rampage. You know where he said, you, know, you can't kill yourself. You've got to stick around. You've got to see how this comes out. You, you can't just run off and leave us. And you do. You... And... Hopefully no one who listened to this is contemplating suicide because hopefully it wasn't really that depressing. Hopefully it, hope, hope is not a process. I want it to be, wanted this to be more of an intellectual exercise and a self-examination you know, and, and thinking these things through and looking at why. Again, why are people intelligent quality? Again, these are not fucking retards and mud people and trailer park trash who are getting sex dolls and finding the God pill, right? I mean, Roosh and TFM, th these are not trailer park trash retards. I mean, these are very intelligent human beings. Why are they doing these things? Why? Why does somebody as smart as TFM have a fucking sex doll? I want to understand that. And again, not to not to ridicule him, not to pass judgment on him, not to say he's a bad, but I want to understand. What is he, you know, is he seeing something there that I don't see? You know, Roosh is fighting the God pill. Roosh is a smart guy. A lot of life experience. He understands people. Why is Roosh suddenly discovering the God pill? I want to understand this. I mean, am I going to make fun of him a little bit for it? Yeah, sure. I'm not going to pretend I'm not. He's a smart guy. I need to understand why he's doing this. Right, so this podcast was not here to make you want to kill yourself, although I could kind of see why that might happen. So just in case anybody's thinking, oh, this is really depressing. My life is sterile too. Wow, the great one's right. There's no hope. No, 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 guys. No, 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 no. No, as long as you're alive, oh, there is always hope. D death is not the answer ever. You got to stick around. You got to enjoy the decline. You got to watch it crumble. And hey, look, who knows? Maybe one day, maybe one day somebody will open a girlfriend store. Go down there and get some fucking quality women who don't have tattoos and purple hair and nose piercings. <laughs> They're going to be really expensive because there ain't many of them. All right. So now now I'm moving past intellectual philosophyism and just moving into babbling. So I'm going to shut the fuck up while I still can. I think that's it. No big conclusion or, or ending here. Yeah, I mean, if you got thoughts on any of this, send them to me. If you think I, if 
fucking missed out anywhere or what the fuck ever, send me some feedback or don't. You know, you want. All right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Hope it brings joy to your weekend. Happy Friday. <laughs> and in theory, in theory, we'll be back with a full load of podcasts. And hopefully, the, last week when I actually did three podcasts and a linkage for the first time in months, I had forgotten how much fucking work this podcast is. And the linkage. I That's... Once again, this is not a prelude to me cyber begging for how you should give me money because I do all this work. And if you listen to the podcast without paying me, you're stealing. at Stefan Molyneux's territory. I'm just saying it's a lot of fucking work to do this. But it keeps me sane a little bit. All right, I'm, I'm stopping now before I say stupid shit. See you cats on the flip side.